We're here in the beautiful village of Riggenberg, high above Interlaken, to meet the Swiss machine Uli Steck. The cowbells are ringing, it's all feeling very Swiss, so let's go and see what the man himself's got to say. Uli. Hey, Charlie. How are you? Are doing? you? Good, you? It's an awesome office. Yeah, it's not too bad. Eh? You want to have a coffee and then we sit out, outside? Oh. Let's go outside and sit on the sun. It's still nice and sunny, eh? It's coffee, Uli. It's very important to have good coffee in life. <laughs> that keeps your engine running, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. You take the machine to base camp? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, I always bring a mocha in base camp. Oh, good man. <laughs> so you've been back a couple of weeks now. When you reflect on the route, how do you, how do you feel about it? It was a big game for me. It was a like, big dream. Like, first time I, I tried it five years ago and now I climbed it and you realize nothing changes you know yeah. life is moving on and I just climbed it but I feel kind of like empty yeah I was going to ask you that because I guess if you've got a dream for a long time particularly if you've been this is your third attempt right yes D do you feel empty now do you feel satisfied I mean, is it happiness is it relief what's the main emotion the main emotion right now is empty Emptiness, yeah. About Annapurna or about climbing? Yeah, about the whole thing, about the whole life, you know. I was so driven yeah. for climbing that in the last, I mean, after I returned from Everest, there was just Annapurna, I wanna, mm -hmm. I really wanna climb that. And now I climbed it and, yeah, what's now? It's Was it better when you hadn't done it and it was still there? Maybe, because he still had something that drives you, you know, like something you can try to catch. Yeah. It's, it's, and right now this is gone. What's interesting as well is you were planning to climb with a partner, but you soloed the route. It sounds like talking to people and reading a bit about the ascent that maybe in your head you thought you might be soloing it. Did you, did you expect to solo it? But well, I did not expect it. You know, if, if I'm somewhere climbing, Sometimes I just go on my own and I know I can climb Annapurna South Face. I can try at least and have a good chance yeah. to solo it. So you have, you know that and that's somewhere in your, in your mind, but you're not planning on that. But you think psychologically before you left, you, you were prepared to do it? No. So you had to think about it when you got there? I mean, we got to the Berkshund and, and Don, he had some doubts mm -hmm. when we got up to the Berkshund. I was like, and I just tried to convince him, just let's go, let's go, because yeah. I was sure there are good conditions. I wanted to make him feel comfortable yeah. to go. And then on the Berkshire, he said, Uli, we have to talk. I was like, and then I knew, okay. And he said, no, I'm, I don't feel comfortable to go up there. And then I realized, okay, he can't. And then I was thinking, okay, I go, I go have a look for sure. And then I turned around and left. And this was a really hard moment. And I knew I just have to go now. But that moment to leave, I just had to go. Yeah. And let these people be there and just be, be alone. And I told them, listen, don't expect any message from me from the mountain. If I'm on the mountain, I just have to be on my own. Otherwise, I lose, yeah. I, I lose the, the focus and I get scared, you know. Just resting without a sleeping bag, and almost 7,000 meters, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You freeze your ass off and <laughs> I don't like that. The French duo got out of their tent and carried on climbing. And it just goes to show you the drive and determination you need to succeed on a face like this.